This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. So, um, we're starting the meeting and uh, the, um, it's a pretty basic agenda for this month, but it's so fun that Ryan's here. Um, and I can't wait to touch base with you because I'm a little confused. It sounds like there's a lot of people doing the donation garden. So that'll be great when we get there. Um, thanks for coming. And uh, yeah, um, I did want to remind people that like one of the goals can be to have our meetings like be closer to an hour. So if you don't have that many updates, it's totally fine. It doesn't need to be no, no pressure to make your little part of the agenda take any amount of time. Um, so um, the public comment section, uh, there's no one who's not on the committee here and there's no non-gardeners here, but if anybody has anything you wanna bring up, you're welcome. It's hot. It's hot. <laughs> it's hot. Um, and I hope that's been mentioned at every uh, city meeting that's, that's happened this week. Um, okay, awesome. And then we'll move on to um, the minutes from um, last month. Uh, uh, I'm going, anyone move to approve those minutes? Motion? Anyone like to motion to? So move. All right. Anyone second the motion? I'll second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Fabulous. And now, um, Ted. Yeah. I, I don't know if you got my new versions to avoid the uh, confusion. <laughs> I, don't uh, yeah. I did so just upload it to the Google Doc, but I forgot to forward it to everyone. So I can do that right now, too. Okay. Uh, well, basically, we're uh, uh, not much changed. Let's just see, expense-wise, we had $70.83 for East Hampton feed and one twenty-five ninety-eight for um, Obershawn. I guess that was the hoses, a couple of more hoses. Um, East Hampton feed the seventy dollars. I think that might have been for plants. Was that the might have been the one for plants? Uh, let's see. For the, um, the parking lot. Yes. Uh, I, yeah, that finally went I'd through. Have yeah. and, I'd have to go back and check that. Um, yeah, I think that is it. And uh, it's not in the report that I have been submitting. Uh, the newer version, and I keep, I'll probably come up with a, another revised edition uh, just to make it as simple and as transparent as possible. Uh, I've indicated um, on these reports what has actually been paid out when I am notified by the city that it's all been taken care of, the receipts have been received. Um, and the city has paid the bill and we're okay. Um, and I've, I've added a column next to that for all, the, all of our different purchase orders, uh, which will show pending expenses. In other words, receipts have all been submitted, but the city has not completed payment. A lot of times that's due to the fact that they haven't gotten the bill yet uh, and had a chance to charge us uh, and so I've put in the amounts. So with East Hampton feed, we have, uh, uh, and it will probably be in the next report, $106.92 that was spent for soil for the pollinator garden. And uh, it's always great when the computer goes out when you're trying to read. Um, and what else? $72.12. Uh, which is the lumber I purchased for the raised beds in the parking lot. Uh, so that still has to be paid. 
and those all those receipts and things have been submitted to the city uh just not completed so that's that's basically what i have uh frank i need to get your receipts and i will give you the cash um if you will put it in an envelope and leave it up in the shed sure i'll uh, put it in a ziploc in an envelope yeah um and i think sarah where you you put you I gave, I sent something to you, I think, and it was next to the uh, the seeds, just as you come in right on the right. There's, um, I think, a, some type of uh, uh, oh, case or whatever that yeah. has the seeds in it. And if you just put it there and put my name on it, and then I will uh, get you the money. Okay. Okay. Awesome. And that's all I have. Any questions? Um, I did. Uh, anyone find out anything else about the um, perennial um, oh. thing? It, where to purchase? My my bad. I uh, someone was going to contact. They were on vacation, and I forgot about it. I will pick okay. up on that. So I apologize. Awesome. No worries. No worries. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah, it took a while for them to get back to City Hall. So that, I mean, they were. That was only too much yeah, They were just away. <laughs> All right, awesome. No, no worries. Um, I do just want to remember to bring something. Uh, okay. All right. Great. Um, do so we have a motion? Excuse me. I motion. Do we have a motion to accept the treasurer's report? I I can't. I move to motion. <laughs> the treasure. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Fabulous. All right. Thanks, Ted. Um, next, operations. And um, I noted, in case you have done some research about the electric mower. Uh, the battery powered mower. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If, if it was electric, that would be interesting. We need a lot of extension cords. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, be awful. I, I, I did. I did do some research into it, and anything close to the deck size that we have, and the reviews were bad, was about twelve hundred dollars. So oh. that's kind of prohibitive there was other ones that are 80 volt uh they're just 21 inch decks and they were coming in anywhere between seven and eight hundred dollars and the bat a battery with that grass up there it wouldn't it wouldn't get through it yeah i don't think i don't think for the really hardcore stuff i don't think the battery technology is still there not it is for cars, but I don't think it is really for lawnmowers. Not not within our budget range, anyway. Cool. And and we need to mow again, so it's it's uh, the grass has been pretty crazy up there with the rain and now the heat. So I'm going to try and get up there sometime this week. Weekend. Wow, it's the end of the week. Yeah, that's where I am. Um. There's still some some people that need to do weeding, and I'm still in touch with them. So people been out of town, and it's been either raining or now it's just like crazy hot. So um, I don't really have a whole lot to add because things have kind of been on autopilot at this point. Um, cool. Well, I did want to let you know just because I was um, doing some weed whacking and was in conversation with John, whose full name is Jonathan, and I keep calling him Jonathan, but he goes by John. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't, I have, I have, I have a neighbor about this thing, yeah. <laughs> um, and he um, is researching how to fix uh, one of them again. It just seems like they both struggle to spool their um, not thread. Yeah, their, whatever is properly so, but they do. There is a to doing that too. I I may just go back up 
and talk to the guys because the guy the, the guys at 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 Flurry Performance they're they're awesome and they're they show you how to do this stuff but then you can go online I've done it before but it's uh because I was using it and it was I was having trouble with it spooling out well and I'll maybe just see, see Jonathan to see because he was reading something last time I talked to him yep. or looking up something awesome really cool anything else I there's not really much else I mean you know when we get I mean, one thing we'll need to think about, and that'll be at the beginning of October, but then we'll need to think about the whole cleanup day and all that and okay. closing things up. I mean, until recently, you really didn't need to water very much either. So, but no, I don't really have much to add. Okay. If anyone has any questions, I'm, I can answer questions. All right. Um, so are we going to talk at the end about, um, redoing the guidelines, redoing the, yes. yeah. the borders of the plots? Yes. I have that in the, um, the continuing business part of the agenda. Okay. All right. All right. Sorry. Okay. Awesome. Um, next, because Margie isn't here, um, I'm just going to read her email really quick uh, for the outreach portion of the agenda. And I seem to have put it in a weird spot. Oh, so, no. Okay. Um, Margie said that so far, um, we don't, we have one person on the wait list and um, she would like to, uh, a whole plot because we only have the half plot available. Um, all right, she's and she was wondering if um, Alyssa would be willing to give up her plot now um, be, um, versus waiting till November. So I assume there's some emailing happening with that. Um, otherwise, the wait list is empty. Um, D7 and C6 are super full of weeds. Um, you were in contact with those people. Okay, cool. So yep. that's in conversation. And... Um, in my meeting notes, I'll just make sure people are on top of their weeds, not going into other people's um, garden. Uh, Sarah, would you run that? It was D7 and what was the other D what? Uh, it, D7 and C6. And C6. Okay. Yeah. Good. That does the same ones. Okay. And then C6, she's actually started working on it. So. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, okay, and that's Margie's updates, it looks like, um, and we'll um, skip path maintenance for now and uh, move on to the donation garden. Ryan, you can take the floor if you have anything to say. I guess you don't have to. <laughs> Uh, I don't have a lot to say, except that I, hello, I'm Ryan. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I came in mid season off of the, the waiting list. Uh, and mostly my plot has been full of weeds, but I have recently <laughs> cleared a lot of them and planted some things. Uh, yay. yay. Um, uh, I, I just happened to bump into Caitlin uh, last weekend and offered that if there were Mondays that she was una un unavailable for whatever reason to do the donation drop off, that that would be an easy thing for me to do. Um, Cause I have a flexible schedule on Monday and I live like a block away from the community center. So she said, ah, actually this Monday. <laughs> so I said, I would do that this Monday. Uh, I realized I'm missing a few details. So I just emailed about that. But um, 
And I said I would do some weeding of the plots also, but have not done that yet. I, this all happened last Sunday that I talked to her. So Thanks. that is as much of an update as I have. It's a huge what, what update. Plot, what, plot <laughs> you take, what plot did you take over? I was just thinking as you were talking about plot numbers and letters that I have no idea what. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure your B four. It's um. I am right next like to the Caitlin. Birch, the donation garden. Well, Ryan's doing the donation garden, but then the her actual plot is the. Oh. It's yeah, that one next, next to the next to Caitlin and oh I forget the other person who's gardening in that but um like it's one me. closer to the shed from from Caitlin from hey, Caitlin that would be I'm looking at it now so that's B six because I'm looking at this this yeah. map must not have been updated Sarah Smith's name is on this Sarah Smith is still in D three. They're the other Smith. It's a A seven or B seven? B something. Yeah, it's instead of Julie Fetterman, it should say Ryan there. And we're talking B as in boy or D as in dog? B as B. in boy. Okay. And I'll change it right now. So which one am I in? B. B6. 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 Now you know, Frank, if you need to come okay. hunt me down. <laughs> it is me in B6. <laughs> um, which reminds me, um, we should probably CC you, Frank, because Margie and I had touched base about who had taken over which plots. Yeah, but, I, yeah I'll that was a, a big gap there. there. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Oh, my gosh. Um, so many moving things going on right now. Also, and emails are just tough for me. <laughs> it's like such a world. Um, hey, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ryan. And I guess I'll update too that um, Caitlin is um, helping organize things along with Nina. And Caitlin's plot, I can't recall. Um, Oh, so yeah, the, this didn't get updated. I think Nina is D7. So Nina's been emailing that she's been away. So that might be why her plots um, like that. But anyways, okay, great. Um, so those two folks have been coordinating about what to do about the donation garden and Ryan's helping. And yeah, it seems like they um, have a plan and it's it's up and running again. Um, and I will add to the Google Doc um, a list with everything that's been donated. Um, and there's been a lot of donations. So that's great. Cool. Right, and now back to and any other questions or con you know, concerns about the donation garden? Okay, great. Karen, you're up. Pollinator updates. So the dirt is in the three raised beds. And I have a nice list of plants actually to put in there. Um, a bunch of them are from my own plot, my own garden at the house. I have a pollinator garden at the house. And some of those have gotten big enough that I can divide them in half and stick some of those in um, in the raised beds. So what you will see um, are small plants, but I'm spacing them with the idea that they're going to do well and uh, fill in their proper space. So if it looks sparse, it's because uh, they've got to have time to grow. So we can count on probably three years for them to fill out into the shape they're supposed to be. Also, uh, you know, I'm trying to use the materials that we have to build up the soil there. That means a lot of wood chips. And I can do that over the winter. Last winter was mild enough that I just kept wheelbarrowing wood chips all winter long. That was great. Um, if we could get 
the other beds built, that'd be great. If not, I'm just going to keep piling wood chips in the location where they're going to be eventually so that the wood chips have time to start breaking down and uh, being more useful to us. I'd like to mention that I, I know, Ted, you don't have time, but um, I could go to Lowe's and get the wood. Um, I won't be able to put the little corner uh, stabilizers in, but Lowe's will make some saw cuts for me. So they would, if they sawed three of them in half, that would give me uh, enough board to do the proper beds without the corners. And I, and I have a drill. So I think that's something that with somebody else's help I could do if Ted can't um, do it. Well, I, <clears throat> I can probably do something, but a little bit later on, right oh, now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not, not, not me either right now. Right now I'm just uh, still trying to get the lawn at the house mode. So, yeah. In yeah. October, October and November. But, you know, we'll see how the winter goes. I don't mind uh, wheelbarrowing as much mulch in as I can during the time when it's not frozen so that it just starts to break down. So, I mean, we c you can always put the beds around. Uh, right. The pile piles. That I need. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll see what I can do, uh, possibly October, November time frame. Okay. Yeah, Stephen. Well, um, just for, just to be clear on this, so if, if we were to do something, uh, as was just discussed, um, we'd be doing it again through your card, Ted, is that way? And we're going to go through the same thing about reimbursement from the city and the month it's going to take for that? That's, well, I, I don't mind the month or so that it takes. That's, uh, uh, that's, that's not an issue. Um, but that's what we would have to do. And probably at the next meeting, if it looks like I'm going to be able to uh, set up a time, we probably would have to add a little bit of money to um, to the account, to, to that purchase order, to purchase the lumber, to have, uh, it cost us $70 for the parking lot, but they were two by sixes. The two by eights are more expensive. So I, th I think it was roughly $140 um, for the first three raised beds. And uh, I'm trying to trying to think. Let me just look at this a second. Right, right now, right now we have about ninety some odd dollars uh, that would be available. So we probably have to increase the amount by. Uh, $50 or so. I don't know if you want to do that now. Uh, or we can we can wait till October uh, if that's possible. The reason I, I do it at Lowe's is I at least get a discount so that the fact that I'm not reimbursed for taxes paid, at least we're getting a discount <laughs> um, on the lumber. Well, I would think um, it'd be probably good either way to add money to that zone now, because if we don't use it this season, it would be there for next season if something else comes up. But that might be in, like reinforcing like you having to go through this process. I don't know. It could, I feel like it's kind of it makes sense either way, but also doesn't make sense either way. So, um, yeah, it's. I mean, it's 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 really not a bother. The uh, it's just that I have to wait 
for the um, for the bill to come through because I do have to submit the uh, I have to submit the receipts and the bill I received from Lowe's to show that I actually did make the purchase from Lowe's and that I have been billed with my name and address on the bill. Uh, so that's usually what takes time. So uh, the um, what the last thing I submitted was something I purchased back in June. And uh, so I, ex I expect to have that within a week or two. So. It's a lag. It's not a problem. Uh, I mean, do you have a preference? Would you rather wait until October to transfer the money over or for the allotment? It, it, it doesn't matter. I would, I would say if we did it, we'd do $100, and that should give us enough and leave us a little bit in the account to, if we need to, to do that. Uh, it might be a better idea at some point if we figure out another way to deal with this. Yeah. But right now, this is the only way I, I can think of doing it. Well, I recommend we just stop going down this road. I mean, we did it originally to get things, but it's it's not a good way to go forward. And so yeah. it's just not a good thing. It's I, not I worth agree. it. Frankly, it's just not worth it. Then we should Whatever just the extra charge would be, just do it to when we when we yeah. have an account and as a city account. This is just nuts. Wasn't it that there was something like they didn't have the wood you want we wanted? Is that what it was? Right. Okay. Do they still not have and, it? And it was more expensive. I I don't know. I I I guess um uh, to find out whether or not they have the regular two by eight lumber and see see what it costs there. We still have the three hundred dollars at Flory Flory Lumber. The reason yeah. I think that's good to bring up, Stephen, is that um, we do need to get these beds made. So this is going to keep being a conversation until these final beds are made. So yeah, um, sorry, Karen, what were you going to say? I said I can contact Flory's. Uh, okay. before the next meeting and find out what their prices are and if they're available. That'd be great. And they, and they deliver. Yeah. <clears throat> um, well, so let's and, do that. That's awesome. Yeah, they'll cut for you too. Yeah, I mean, the local, we've got a city contract and they deliver. And you can't, I mean, I mean it's Karen, I would say unless they just don't have the wood, which would be surprising, from a lumber company, uh, um, then then I say we just do it. I don't think it matters. I mean, the differential in prices is not worth it. Okay, I'll check it out. Great. Okay, then we'll hold off on doing oh. anything. Yeah. Okay. Check out. The um, before I forget, I just wanted to say, uh, Karen, if you want to go to Bay State Perennial, I have um, one of their like membership cards for the summer. And starting on Saturday, you get 30% off all of the plants. Um, so I might be stopping by. You can email me if there's something that you may be like, I'm not, I, I'd be willing to donate some money, not a ton, but if there's something like you really want, like I'll see if they have it and uh, donate it to the pollinator plots or, or let you use the membership card if you want to go shopping or whatever but just let okay. me know okay all right anything else for pollinator stuff no no that's it great all right so um now would be some gardener feedback but it's just um oh christine's here so there's a non-committee member uh, but anybody have any other uh things they want to add to the agenda or comments or anything fabulous I, actually i have one oh, yeah. it'd be interesting to know if we were going to get any update on just what's going on in the abandoned orchard next to us and all the work that bindu did and yeah i, I just I just contacted Cassie Trager uh, last week, 
and she said nothing's happening yeah because I, I because they left all these like they sprayed pesticides there or whatever but they never said what it was and the signs are still there i don't know if that spraying is ongoing or they did it one time and then they just never came back and took the signs up like i'm it's just kind of weird uh you That's know weird. she said it's like it sounded like the town is busy with other stuff right now so this is sort of on a back burner uh -huh. while they're sorting out everything else and when they feel like they have time <laughs> to deal with it uh it, it really didn't sound like it's a priority at this point okay might be good to email them specifically about the pesticide or yeah, the that would be herbicide yeah um, yeah it didn't say herbicide it said pesticide but i'd be curious to know because they said they were getting I thought like getting rid of some of the invasive plants. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. Okay. But it's just, there was a, uh, it's kind of weird. We haven't gotten any kind of update on it. It's been a while. We got so many updates last summer and now there's no. Yeah, I know, huh? <laughs> and that doesn't look like much is happening there. I mean, it did in the back end, but I haven't been walking through there cause I just, it's tick season, man. No, mm. and that may be that may be what part of that spray was. I don't know. I have no idea what it was for. Mm. If I see Russell up there, I'll see if he had talked to them when he did it and see if he knows what what, what it was. Great. And um, I'll I'll try to email specifically about what they were spraying and stuff too. Um, and the conservation, so, the conservation commission should know. Somebody there ought to know that, or they'll at least know who does know. Let's put it that way. Cool. All right. Okay. Awesome. So let's move to the old slash continuing business, which is the um, the plot mapping, and then um, within that, you know, continuing to edit um, the the guidelines. Does anyone have anything they want to start with saying? Well, I I could start with the fact that we need to, we really need, I don't know if we need a surveyor or someone who's got any kind of experience with it, but we really need to remeasure everything. It's, it's time. It's been over okay. 10 years. So that would be something and it's not something we're going to figure out right now but this is something that we need to we need to we need to get serious about and then do over and we need to put something in the ground that's really hard to move mm -hmm. cuz some of these things got moved over the years and uh those little fiberglass things were not a good idea i think they were at the time yeah but we need to think of something else uh because the lines are just, I know stuff is off. Um, Karen? That'll kick it off. Yeah. I would like to have um, a visual added to that guideline document oh, yeah. that shows that these are in squares of four and that there are uh, large corridors, large grass corridors, and between the blocks of four small pathways. So that's visually obvious so that if this ever comes up again, I don't have people repeating over and over, yes, there's a path there. No, there wasn't a path there. And the visual will show it because even though we said there was no path, I kept hearing about the path. Yeah, there, there's no path except what you make in your own plot. Right, and that's you what... It's almost like if you build a fence in your yard and you have to have a foot buffer on the other side. Mm -hmm. If you want to have a path, that's how you got to think. And, you know, and this is where we we kind of we get the language clear. So well, and the, that, visual, the visual would and be the visual. Good. Yeah, because we have visual learners and uh, I'm one of them. So um, but no, I agree. I think a visual is a really good idea. And it's just. Then there's no there's no debate. This is what it is. 
Okay, great. So when making a map, um, Mark had brought this up when we were talking about it earlier in the summer, we might need to decide as a committee what we want, what our intentions are when designing these boundaries. Um, I'm happy to use the initial plans that were made, which is the quadrant system with mm -hmm. paths, or we can get rid of paths entirely. You know, we just, I think as a committee are gonna have to decide so that we can put it in the guidelines. What's important? Are paths important to like how we wanna construct this um, or not? And then the other thing that we need to decide that I, has been mostly in my mind is, are we going to try to set firm boundaries based on how the plots have adjusted themselves to look right now? And we can just stake out that every plot is 20 by 20 and we'll get a map drawn. Um, and th those are the plots. And it might not be the perfect quadrant system, but it would accommodate all the changes that have been made so that current gardeners don't have to change their layouts too much. Or we can go, we can really go back to the, you know, the old borders, but it might mean that like some people will realize their plots like moved over this way. They're going to have to, you know, redo whatever. Um, so it might be like kind of a huge project depending on, I don't know what we want. So how do we get help from a surveyor so that we can actually see exactly what has changed if a lot has changed? We we might not need to because the four, the, the C1, mm -hmm. all the rebar there is exactly measured out because, and, and when Rick, that was, he was, one of the one of the founding people on the 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 committee and wally who is is a contractor they they measured everything off they're the ones that did all the original measurements and rick always told me don't move the don't let anyone move this rebar i told sarah when she had that plot don't let him move the rebar because the this that's the anchor that you go off of Mm -hmm. But that's if okay. we're using the original mapping that rebar right. would be and, important. And my, because I, I'm I just from all the years, Sarah, that I've inspect done weed inspections, I think we need a reset and we need to go back to the original. Because mo I, I can just from my own eyeballs from the very beginning to where things are now, if, if something is shifted, it's 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 by maybe a foot or less. It's not, it's not going to be like a major, it's not going to be like three feet or something like that. I mean, there's people on the B, B part on the B row that have like a foot and a half to two feet of grass that should be actually be their plot. Like B, uh, Deb's Deb, I just closed the plot map too. I just had it pulled up. Uh, Deb's plot that she's sharing, that plot is at least a foot and a half to two feet shallow from the main corridor and it just needs to be dug up and 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 um and then tilled again or or whatever but i i in all fairness to anybody who's coming in who's who's being told they're getting a 20 by 20 plot that's really what they should get you know yeah i don't think there's any quibbling over the 20 by 20 it would just be how we're going to mark every 20 by 20 plot is either right. marking it based off of that one piece of rebar or looking at how the plots have situated themselves measuring them each to 20 by 20 and marking all four corners with stakes that can't be moved which will happen in either scenario it's just if we're going to use that piece of rebar as our guiding light or if we're going to look more at how things have changed right yeah what, what I saw with mine, C2, was that um, that the grass had grown in. And I didn't know, actually, what I didn't know that my plot was 20 by 20. And I didn't know how far into the grass. I mean, I saw that some people were more into the grass. Mine was less into the grass. 
So I think if we go by the original rebar, then it will be um, it will be more a matter of uh, showing that this part of the grass is really your plot. So you you know if you want to use it, dig it up. And that was something that I brought up when they were coming in with the whole redesign, you know, the Conway School stuff and all, and and because they learn how to survey. I I've had friends who've gone through that school. And I just think that would be an easy thing for them to add in to oh, that project. Get them to survey it for us? Yeah, because they okay. have to learn how to survey. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Yeah. And I, and I really do because I, I, it, it's been so long because I, if, if, we're, if this is going to be a, 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 a community garden and it's going to be uh, and it's rotated, my goodness, there's been so many people who've gone through. Uh, we really want to try and maintain some sort of standard so that yeah. um, there aren't any disputes. And I, the reason we have the quadrants is because everybody can get to their plot from a main corridor mm -hmm. e uh, on, on at least two sides. Right. So <laughs> south and north side or the east and the west side. And so maintaining the quadrant, I think, it, it because if we start getting into smaller paths, those things need to be mowed, mulched, maintained. And that really ought to be on the person whose plot. If they want to have a little walkway, then they, they need to maintain it. I'd be happy to email Cassie Trager <laughs> and ask her. She would be the one to contact Conway School. Right. She, okay, I'd be happy to ask her if, you know, this, I mean, it would be a small project. It wouldn't take them long. And the fall might be a good time uh, when the vegetation is dying for them to do it. I think really like November, mm -hmm. once we've done our cleanup, then I think that wow. would that would if, if 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 this let's say this was a possibility and it happened that would be an ideal time for sure yeah. especially I, if we I'll, get everything mowed down really low um and all the visual lines are good i'll put it to her and see what she says mm -hmm. and if that doesn't work two of my close friends are plant surveyors so i can just ask them as well oh yeah yes. I'll, I'll give them some beans what was that? <laughs> I'll give them some beans. Oh, they, I, one of them, I can guilt trip, no problem into doing it. Oh, really? So, <laughs> yeah, they owe me, so. <laughs> but I, can, um, I, but did, up, I make awesome ginger snaps. I can hook them up with some good ginger uh, snaps. But did Ted or Steven or Christine want to weigh in on this? I, I just wanted to ask Frank, what were the original uh, widths of the past? Oh, that's that a is what you mean the main path or the corridor? No, no, just uh, I'm I'm just trying to visualize this, and I'm visualizing as you survey forty by forty plots, right? With and then you need with to know the width of the path to I, know where you start your next forty by forty, right? And that I can't. That I could try and, and email Rick. I, I should still have his. I know someone who has his email. Okay. Because that's if, a really if we knew the question. width. Yeah. If we knew the width of the the path, right? Uh, th I mean, there there are reasonably easy ways to get forty by forties and to get them correct, right? Um, and then you you just take the each little quadrant there, and you can divide up and see where the uh, the twenties wind up. But the uh, uh, it's it's really getting the forty by forties. I think is what you want. Yeah, and I think that really it's the length of the paths between the quadrants. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's right. where that's where what we need to off. Know. And I would also suggest uh, the rebars. You can pick up those little two-footers or 18-inchers at, uh, right. at Lowe's. <laughs> <laughs> we love advertising basic perennials at Lowe's. <laughs> uh. But, yeah, we can uh, – I mean, I'd be willing to work on that if, if we don't get some pros or uh, pros to be. 
okay. learning how to do it. Okay. But I think we need to be there with the surveyor also, uh, at least one of us, uh, you know, showing them the rebar and talking about uh, the, the past because we're going to, the surveyor is going to help us to, I don't know how they do it, but we're going to like lay string or something, right? Showing. Yeah. You're going to run it. You're going to run string. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, at least one of us needs to be with the surveyor. Well, I say that, but that's not necessarily true. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, I yeah. do it with diagonals. Yeah. And then you get your, all you need is yeah. a 40 by 40 square. Well, it'd be good just for one of some, I mean, it'd be fun to learn how they're going to do it. Oh my gosh. And yeah, I think Karen's totally. right. Like, yeah, if one of us is there, then if something happens where somehow rebar gets moved, we can kind of know what to do or, you know. Mm -hmm. Because um, the other thing we have to think about too is like, there's those, all the irrigation lines, all the underground PVC is based on uh, where these plots are as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And that was put in at the very beginning. So that's why trying to stay true to what we had at the very beginning is really important. Um, yeah. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, no, because that's, there's, there's, I'm just thinking things are coming to my head as I'm, as we're talking about this. Yeah. And that's the whole idea right now is just kind of throw everything against the wall, you know, and, and, yeah. uh, and then see what kind of makes the most sense. And again, we we've, we've got some time to think about this, and and I can, I I know that I know Laura has, um, I know she's got Rick's email, and and I can get a hold hey. of Wally. I I can get a hold right. of him. And just let us know if you don't, and one of us can take yeah. over that emailing as well. And Christine texted me. She said a lot of surveyors use lasers now. Yeah, which it is, is true. Almost all laser. Okay, but the location of the water spigots is going to be a guide for us as well right uh, yeah kinda. more or less they're not they're not right on the line of the the plots they're they're a little bit off but not by much but mm -hmm. yeah okay and we we might want to before they put the final stakes in the ground might want to see what it does to the garden to the plots that have developed yeah. over the years Yep. To see if there are any major issues. I mean, are we are we cutting three feet off somebody's plot because there's over time it's sort of drifted? I don't think it's going to be. It's not that dramatic, though, Ted. Really, I just eyeballing from all the years and having done inspections all these years. It's it's not going to be something like that. It's really not. I think where the issue may be is more between the east west line between the plots more than on uh, if you're I'm just trying to think about like Sarah like for with your plot the person that's that's west of you behind or below you is Christine right so <laughs> those those lines they they they've probably shifted more than anything else because the stuff with the main corridor okay well if you're out in the grass um you know but it's only like two inches and then that's easy enough to let the grass grow back or we decide well that's two inches less we got to mow but it's going to probably be more between on the interior borders of of things i think and, and we'll see I, I say that but then i think we had issues with the you know, with the other line too. So, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be a whole lot just because we've maintained the paths fairly well, the main paths. Um, it's not going to be three feet. I'd be shocked. Yeah. And, well, and um, then Steven is good. Steven knows, uh, he can mitigate. He mediate, excuse me. <laughs> mitigate, mediate. I'll I'll do both. <laughs> Throw it in together. Package deal. <laughs> Stephen, did you want to have uh, share anything too? <laughs> okay, great, awesome. Well, that was great. I and, believe um, it's, it's a good way to start the discussion. I believe in open borders. 
Yeah. What's that, Stephen? I believe in open borders. <laughs> I, I but might not try plants. not invasive plant. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, I might try to allude, like note in the email that we started this discussion, and I'm I have a feeling like I just want to make sure that all the gardeners can weigh in, um, it, or ha make sure they know they can. Yeah. Um. So, uh, we'll make sure we, we, people know we, we start talking about it. So maybe we open up like a, a, a document, a Google Doc or something where anybody oh, okay. can put in. Yeah. And then um, I also was thinking I'd send you guys the, a copy of the guidelines again to note edits on for wording and any additional things that you guys have noticed that you want to add to those guidelines this year. I think, um, I think it's a it's good idea. It's always editable, but I'll just resend the link so that you guys can look at it. Awesome. Okay. Great. All right. And then Karen, you're emailing Cassie, and then you'll let me know if they're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it would be a nice little um, school time project for somebody. Yeah, and they'd so. be teaching us. <laughs> yeah, I, and I would love to learn. Yeah, I'd love to learn how it works. So I, I have a question too, while we're talking about spigots and uh, the garden. Um, I'm assuming that the water is East Hampton water and it's drinkable, um, but I had not seen that stated anywhere. Um, it is. Uh, well, it's East Hampton water. Okay, so it's potable. Uh, yeah. Where you want to drink it from? The spigot. I drink it from the spigot. I, I mean, seem okay. <laughs> I would if I was gonna drink it from a spigot, I'd drink it from the spigot up at the top. I would not drink it from your garden because if there was any kind of leak in the in any of the lines, mm -hmm. um I you know I've I've lived I've lived in other countries and you know you had to take things like that into account. So okay. actually okay. you have to take that into account in this country too. What am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> I've lived in places in this country too. No, um, I, I would up at the main spigot. Yeah. Okay. And then if you, then you, and I, and I would, if you're, if you did, I would drink from the spigot. I, I wouldn't drink from just any hose because not all hoses are, uh, the materials are not all for potable water. Boat oh. hoses, yeah, boat okay. hoses are, and the Flexzilla hoses are. I don't know about the new ones that Mark bought, though. Okay, what uh, can you want to give us colors? What colors are okay? <laughs> I, I would. My best advice would be to to bring your own water in a. Yeah, in a water just don't, don't yeah. Do it. But I can yeah, do it. Man. Just don't. Just don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> just only if you really are thirsty. Don't yeah. hurt yourself if you're dehydrated. Yes. <laughs> but the the other thing too is you know, like up up at the main spigot. I know people who uh, walk their dogs. I've seen people, you know, and I had to actually tell somebody you you have to turn that water back off. If you ah. use it. it's the fine, you know, because you know I don't want your doggy dying, but um, just be, you know, leave it the way you found it, please. And they were nice; they were, you know. But yeah, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't just drink. I mean, when I was a kid, I was always drinking out of the hose. But actually, really, it's there's certain hoses that are designed for potable water, and there are ones that are not. Okay. And the Flexzilla ones are, I would assume, other than the Flexzilla hoses, that none of them are for designed for potable water. Mm. Yeah. Okay. But you can pour it on your head. That works. <laughs> Sometimes um, it's so hot there. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Um, just a note about the part, the, um, the mapping. Um, Christine just um, mentioned that uh, I had um, done what Karen did after discovering my plot was too small. And so I moved my plot over towards um, this, was it C4? Uh, um, but because, um, because of that, it's been quite a hindrance on Christine. Um, and she 
was wanting to request a right of way easement for the path grandfathered in by Laura Fisher um, for C4 and D4 um, to keep those paths. Right of way easements. Yeah, no. Whoops. <laughs> this is I mean, that was an agreement between a former uh, person. Sorry, Christine. That was a agreement between with a former owner of the, or I should say a renter of the plot. And that would be, again, this is where we have the line. That's why we need to do this because we need. Yeah. To and I guess, but I do want to leave it open to that. Like I, I, I Christine has, it, it's been very hard on her. And I want to make sure that as we make these changes, even if we like all like to stop, make a decision, everyone can say like, I really feel nervous about this change or like, you know, can say like, can we do an easement? And then we can decide. But you um, have just, access to each plot has access from two different sides. That plot at the bottom has access from the West, from the North side and from the West side. And, and I've kept part of the, path for us to share as well I mean, if that, but, and that, if that's but i just think that as that. part of the larger discussion i think it's important for everyone to get to say sure you know i agree um and i also know that um in my situation too there's all the thistle plots next door so it was like i was afraid to expand that way because i knew it was you know there. that would go against the mapping but i also knew that no one's using those plots so yeah it's it's important that we're about to do this but it will it will mean we'll have to hear some people are like i really feel more comfortable having you know a path on all sides um stephen i my plan had been just to listen today and it, and it still is that <laughs> but, but but i'll just let me just say that you have to understand we have a we have a kind of a We've been granted by the city who are the owners of the property the land that was that was given to the city uh, for a specific purpose uh, and we are basically the licensees so to speak of that as, as plot holders to look for a legal type of remedy i i hear what you're saying about christine's situation and christine i'm not saying this to say that the situation you're talking about is unrectifiable but I wouldn't look to a legal remedy like an easement because I'll just tell you, from my opinion, it's utterly unenforceable in any in any way except for the good, the good faith of the of the gardeners. So, uh, you know, we use that term, but it actually is illegal and it, ha it has a legal meaning. And I and I guess I would just want to make sure that people weren't walking away thinking that we could create some set of legal rights between us when we don't when we're not situated in a way that we can that's all now i'm back to listening no, that's no thank you i'm glad you said something that's good clarification right awesome um any other things and then um Christine said she's just looking for a safe path. She's not trying to be lit, lit, litigious. Is yeah. that the word? That's what I did. That was my, Christine, that was my that was my little caveat. I know you're not, and uh, and and I'm just I'm just suggesting you know we, we things like this can be rectified and will be. I hope. But let's just uh, you know as we're thinking through, and everyone's just thinking you know laying stuff on the table. That's how you have creative thinking. So absolutely. You know, so absolutely, this is the time to do that. I thought I would just mention that I didn't that we wouldn't go too too far about into thinking yeah. that one of the potential solutions is to create a set of legal rights that's probably not worth yeah. um, our, our like and that does not mean that you're trying to be litigious and it does not also mean that you know that the concerns raised by you uh, can't be resolved well if, if we redo and properly mark the plots everybody will have access to a reasonable path to their plot absolutely it's just on only on sides. one side yeah. no two sides if, two, two sides, sides. Two sides. Yeah. if if they yeah. choose 
to to have a path in addition to that it comes out of their plot that would that right. would yes yeah which is that's a a, a legitimate and I don't, I don't know anything that would be against that if somebody wanted to use part of their plot to have a path on three sides as opposed to four side, uh, two sides. Right. They, they could use part of their plot to do that. Because it depends on what you're growing and how you're growing. Because maybe one year, you, because you're growing something different, you, have, you create another space to access whatever you're growing. The next year, you might not need to do that. You know? And that's that's the beauty of experimentation. But the idea is, you know, I think I think if we just I would like to at least keep this idea out there that all these plots are rolling over. Some of them like I've had mine since the beginning, but there's so many other plots that are rolling over and changing hands. And and if there's if somebody's new is walking into something, a standard that they know they can rely on. I think that's, you know, it's, it's a good thing for us to think about. Yeah, I guess I might just add about this particular issue. Christine inherited um, uh, Laura Fisher's plot, but my plot, the one that need, needed to be expanded, wasn't Laura's. I yeah. don't know whose that was. So if if, you know, it's this thing again where it's like, well, I, you know, then in this situation, D4 would just need to make a little bit of, if there is a need for a path, yeah, just D4 would need to take that on if um, D3 didn't want to, or, you know, the Correct. conversation would have to happen, or maybe it would come out of both people's versus just one person's or, you know, but yeah, exactly. That I think that's my hesitation with these quadrants is it does bring up a lot of tension, but I think that if we stick with it and we make it the rules that we're going to set, you know, we'll be able to say, explain it to people. It's just as, you know, I'm as a committee, just making that decision, like which, you know, and I think you're right. If we had a bunch of narrow paths to maintain, that might be really hard too. So. Oh yeah. yeah. Just doing, having done the weed inspections over the years and Mo, it, it, it yeah, because it's, yeah, I, it would be a nightmare. It, it would it would uh, i mean it's this has been a tough year already just you know walking around and looking but i think if we start making even more paths it's just whatever it takes whatever you have to maintain more uh whenever you have to maintain more it's it's with that many plots it it, it would be i i can predict it would probably be problematic mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. but if if somebody chooses so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what Christine's situation is, but if she felt she needed access on three sides, she would get her 20 by 20 plot and then she would put her path in that she needed in that area where she needed it and she would maintain it, right? Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, so, that's just part, you, you maintain your plot. So, right. So she could maintain path, her path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of like what Ted said earlier. I mean, he simply, it was fairly straightforward, you know. And so once we, we have this bigger discussion and we get input from everybody, then, um, you know, we'll, we'll try to write the, because we want it, we want it to be as clear as possible. Um, yeah. And uh, so that there's no there's no gray area, and it's and it's it's simple to understand. Great. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm just yeah, excited no, to get the good, ball good rolling. First discussion. But we are at eight seventeen now. We are. <laughs> okay, uh, I just right, raised so one issue. Yeah, I would love Ted, please. Yeah, yeah. just uh, quickly since uh, we're talking about plots, it would be helpful to me if if we had a uh, a diagram of the plots it doesn't have yeah. to be perfect it doesn't have to mention exact dimensions but just so that a a1 a, a b1 whatever we right. we have it up to date and posted in the shed yeah inside so, the shed, in the shed. Right. Yeah. inside the shed so we know who is in what plot yep 
and uh, I'll work on that. Uh, yeah, and I'll works. and I'll even draft it kind of in the way that we just explained. Like I know the Google Doc form is great, but it doesn't include any of these pathways, which I think is part of the confusion. So I'll sort of draft our I concept as well for like what the paths are uh, as part of that. And uh, yeah, Sarah, you're right. I think that plot that map it it because it doesn't take the quarters into account. Yeah. I think I think it's a good idea to to just for a better visual. Yeah. Right. Amazing. So I'll do that, and um, I might include that with the email of and telling people about the discussion we had too, so they can yep. see it and and know what, what the heck we're talking about. Um, awesome. Right. Any other final questions about anything? All right, awesome. So um, the next meeting is all the way in October, uh, which is on the 5th. And that's so exciting. I uh, can't believe it's already going to be October. I know. Huh? <laughs> like a weird summer. Um, and yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, motion to end the meeting. Still move. I second it. Great. All in favor. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers.